We are just about done with this house. I had the plumber, the electrician, and the HVAC contractors come yesterday just to kind of look over their work. I was going to do a walkthrough of the house, show you guys. This is the new floor we put in. If you remember, it was a concrete slab uh, that had about a quarter inch of dust on everything from the house having flooded. The bathroom looks quite a bit nicer now. That's the barn door closet that we put in. And the carpet that we picked, just neutral gray. You can get that at Home Depot. The paint was a bear color. Called uh, uh, Downtown Gray. That's right, Downtown Gray. And you can see where I had the video. All the plumbing work that had to be done there. Advanced Plumbing came and updated all of it since it was broken, rerouted it through, uh, since it was broken in the slab, rerouted the supply lines into the attic, put R49 in the attic. There was only R11 up there before, or about, I'd say about six inches of blown in. So it's nice and warm in there, in the house closets. For a small house, this is a three bedroom. I would personally make this an office, but that's quite a bit of space for a small house like this. And the flooring I picked, I usually go with lighter, but I went with darker this time. Um, I just liked this a little bit better and it was kind of a nice change than, than the gray. I start getting a little bit tired of gray. Put these window coverings on. These you can also get at Home Depot. It's a cellular blind shade that looks like wood. They're pretty inexpensive. And you want to put everything that you can into the house because people who want to purchase it, they want to do as little as possible. Uh, these cabinets over here were actually uh, something that we saved from someone else's kitchen that they were remodeling. They were going to throw them out, but they were really nice Marillac cabinets. Got the uh, granite, decided to pay for that. I like this. I'm not a big fan of just the contractor grade granite that's white with the black fleck that you usually see. And then these cabinets were actually purchased since they don't make this design a cabinet anymore. I just decided to go completely different in design and uh, completely different design and handle as you can see. And I decided that because if it's going to be different, I want it to look intentional. And I do like these cabinets. The, uh, the appliances we usually get at ABC Warehouse. This one was on sale. Full stainless steel. Stainless steel kitchen. Always try to get stainless steel. And if you cannot, we go with black. Now, for the things that were found yesterday, the electrician found that the old way that this house was wired, and it was wired about 1959, there was, uh, there was a GFI here, but it was linked to another GFI. The electrician told me that downstream, you only have to have the GFI at the start of the run. So this one does not need to be GFI if it's tied into this one that is. And it was the same over here on this counter. There was no GFI. The other thing he found was that this was a standard plug that the guy had installed and that needs to be GFI for your, to supply power for your microwave. The plumber, what he found was that everything was pretty low uh, with this being on a slab. The pipes are not broken under the house, thank goodness, but there were about four different joints that were just compression, uh, making, making the drain up. So he took that out, put a new P-trap in, put a new uh, discharge hose for the, for the dishwasher, and welded 
you know, uh, with solid PVC all the way back to, uh, to back where the drain will actually go into and under the house. The other thing the plumber found was that the pipe was really, it was really set up strange for uh, the future clothes washing machine. It was, uh, there was just one pipe and there was a little pipe coming off of it. And that was for the discharge for if you were to have, you know, a laundry sink or if you were to have the, the clothes washer. And the problem with that is there was no P-trap. So the P-trap was keeping sewer gas from coming into the house underneath the sink, but sewer gas was still coming up through this pipe and uh, getting into the house, and nobody really wants to smell that. So again, he used PVC, put a P-trap in here, and he commented to me that usually you use inch and, or I'm sorry, two inch for any drain, especially for a sink or for, for the washing machine, but in this house, um, it was inch and a half, and it's inch and a half all the way under the house, and the inspector uh, did not have a problem with it because it was already existing, but inch and a half is not usually what you use here. Uh, the other issue that came up was uh, they felt that there should probably be a pan underneath the the water heater, but the inspector said that's not necessary in this case because this is not a finished floor. I just epoxied it, and you are required to have it if it's a finished floor. Uh, but the other reason that we didn't have to have it is there's no drain in this room. So the idea with the code there is that a homeowner will see the water starting to fill up, know that there's a problem, and call a plumber to fix it before it gets all over their floor and ruins everything or leaks into the kitchen and ruins the floor there. Um, and they want it there even if there is a drain because if, if it's a slow leak, it could dry out and the homeowner wouldn't notice. So that was the rationale there. But this is not a finished floor and there is no drain, so it's not required here. The other thing that the electrician had found was that the range was on a 30 amp breaker. It needed to be on a 40 amp, so that got switched out. The supply plug for the, uh, for the washing machine also was not GFI, so that was switched out. And at the front of the house, there are lights for when you enter the house, but there was no light at the back, so this was installed. Uh, so that if you come into the house, you uh, and it's night, you have light, and you can safely enter the house without tripping and falling. Since we are in a floodplain, the HVAC had to come and lift the AC unit 24 inches um, to meet code. That is not typical, but I just figured I'd show it to you. So this house is about ready for me to call on the final inspections. The electrician's gonna call on his final today. Uh, the plumber is gonna call on his tomorrow. And uh, the HVAC and plumbing inspector are the same person. So he will be looking at both of those. But you can see what we did here. Um, if you refer to the first video that I put on, this house had almost no drywall. A lot of the walls were rotted. Uh, nothing was treated in here. No bottom plates were treated. Everything was, was old or, or not here. The, uh, the furnace was sitting in the middle of the floor. Uh, fortunately, it was brand new and I didn't have to pay anything to have that fixed. Uh, just had to pay to get it installed. Didn't have to buy a new one. So you can see we're almost there. And when everything is cleaned up and it's on the market, I'll do one last video showing uh, showing everything that we've done, but it's been a long process. Purchased in July, it's now January, so it's it's. Uh, I'm happy to see the end of the the light at the end of the tunnel here. There's just a couple little fixes to some trim, some touch-up painting, but there we are. Well, the inspector just left, 
and we passed our final so this house can be occupied I'm going to show you everything that we did here's the new paint color and you come in brand new floors nice new bare paint on the walls going with classic gray white trim into the all brand new kitchen granite countertops new backsplash stainless steel appliances everything updated to GFI and protected brand new water heater brand new furnace from uh, Sharon's heating and cooling updated on the plumbing from the plumbing having been broken it uh, actually broke underneath the slab so we had to get approved to go through the attic I've mentioned that a couple times before brand new panel 200 amp service there's all our approvals brand new interior doors I like these arch top a little better than the six panel I think they just look a little bit nicer it's a bathroom this is the only room that is virtually unchanged uh, just a couple updates new carpet the cellular blinds that I spoke about earlier last video I'm gonna combine these two videos though here closet space in the hall that's how I solved the issue of not having a lot of space to have a door open so we put a barn door in this is the master bedroom final bedroom I like these blinds because there's no cords for kids to get hung up on you just push them up and they stay pull them down so that's nice and safe for little kids so this is the house took about six months I will post the pictures at the beginning of this um, there were a lot of features that we did like actually putting hardwired smoke detectors in all tied together um, you know actually pulled permits there was a lot of unpermitted work in here previous design on the kitchen never had a dishwasher involved I have a dishwasher now like I said there was almost not one GFI in the whole house and all of the appliances were uh, they were on service that wasn't correct so I'm getting ready to go look at another one probably pretty soon and uh, that'll be the first one that we get to talk about start to finish so I'm pretty excited about that um, not to say that I'll get this one, but you'll get to see what the house looks like when we first get to look at it, and they are pretty scary at times. So this was the LaSalle project, and uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of sad to see this one go. It's a neat little house.